In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. My dear brethren, the Eucharist, what could be more admirable than this sacrament? No sacrament is more salvific than this one. Through it, sins are wiped away, virtues are increased, and the soul is nourished with the abundance of all spiritual gifts. It is offered in the Church for the living and for the dead, so that what has been established for the salvation of all serve all. And finally, no one can describe the sweetness of this sacrament, in which spiritual sweetness is tasted, tasted at its source, and in which the memory of that excess of charity which Christ manifested in his passion is celebrated. My dear brethren, by these few words from St. Thomas Aquinas, we can remember the importance of today's feast. It is so high that we lack words to explain the benefit of this sacrament, which we celebrate today. This sacrament is in the middle of every feast. Every day, thousands of masses are celebrated in honor of God and his saints. But today, we highlight this gift from God to mankind. Today, we do justice. We give God the glory he deserves. A great solemnity has risen over the world, Corpus Christi. Truly the feast of God, but also the feast of man, being the feast of Christ, mediator, present in the host, to give God to man and man to God. The Eucharist is thus the link between God and mankind. Through it, each person receives the grace he needs to join God into heaven. Through the Eucharist, mankind is de deified. Human nature is elevated to a supernatural state. But that is possible only thanks to the infinite goodness of God. God sent his only begotten Son to take flesh and become a man. And the Eucharist must remind us, dear faithful, of our Redeemer condition, but it is also memorial of the mysteries of Christ Jesus, memorial of the mystery of the love of God, who still wants us to be partakers of his divine life, despite our weaknesses. Therefore, the Eucharist recalls us, above all, the memory of the passion of Jesus. It was on the eve of his death that he instituted it. He left it to us as a testament of his love, says Don Marmio. Yes, after taking human nature, God left us without living. He remained among mankind through this sacrament, continuing to give his life, his body, his graces through a small host of bread, accessible to all. The Eucharist reminds us of the passion of our Lord at every Mass when we look at the cross above the altar and when we cry out these words during the elevation of the host and the chalice, my Lord and my God. The Eucharist reminds us also of the incarnation of the Lord, the Word of God made man and born in a poor crib among animals and in the coldness of winter. A man who waited 30 years in the shadow before beginning to preach the kingdom of heaven. A man and a God who created the world but was rejected by it despite his love for it. He was in the world, tells us St. Tells us John in his gospel. He was in the world and the world was made by him and the world knew him not. He came unto his own and his own received him not. Incarnation, passion. But the Eucharist reminds us also of the mystery of redemption. Mankind sinned, refusing God so many times, and yet God is still here in the host, looking at him, looking at her, looking at you. God and the mystery of his love 
the mystery of the redemption of his people. But God goes beyond the limits of human imagination. Not only he becomes similar to mankind, but also he makes mankind similar to God. Love tends to union, and what better union that, than that of the body assimilating the food that strengthens it. That's it. That is how God chose to be united to us, dear faithful, entirely, completely consumed by you. What a mystery, what a grace, when we know that it is the one we receive at every communion, the one who created us, who owns our life, who is almighty and master of all things. What an admirable behavior. And so, how should be our own behavior when we receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ? Indifference, carelessness, deficient attention, banal attitude, distracted attitude, mind occupied with thoughts of the world. No, let us have this morning, dear faithful, a very short examination of conscience. We have the grace to receive the Blessed Eucharist a lot of times, even every day. Is our behavior, our attitude towards Christ appropriate? Are we aware of who we are receiving so many times? His coming once in our hearts should be enough for our entire conversion, but we are still so far from perfection. And maybe because our souls were not ready enough for this so powerful King. So today, at least, let us try to receive our Lord in the Blessed Sacrament as if it was the first time, as if it was the last time, as if it was the only time we ever received him. And thus, we will fulfill the words of our Lord in the Gospel of today's Mass. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. <laughs>